Uh, hi everyone, um, I am just stepping in for Anna Irvin today while she is at a training course um, and she was asked me to do a brief introduction of what NHIP is. So NHIP is a brand which is Newcastle Health Innovation Partners which forms our Academic Health Science Centre. They are um, accredited by NIHR. Um, for five year periods, we received our accreditation in 2020 and we will run until 2025. Um, AHSCs bring together um, institutions that perform excellence in research and innovation and education and training. And our partnership is made up of Newcastle Health, Newcastle um, Hospitals, Newcastle University, Newcastle City Council, um, High Neck and... Um, CNTW is a mental health trust and Northumbria are an affiliate partner looking to be a full partner moving forwards and then I'll hand over to Catherine to introduce today's talk. Thanks can I thank you uh, George, uh, Sylvia for coming today to give this seminar to to the NHIP uh, uh, group so Sylvia I mean I've, I've known her for, for quite a while now but Sylvia uh, so she's from the San Rafael Institute for Gene Therapy in Milan and she is a group leader at the uh, Mechanisms of Peripheral Tolerance uh, Unit. And she, she started, or one of her starting points in her career was looking at the role of vitamin D3 in transplantation tolerance. And later on, she was one of the people that did a lot of work on regulatory type one cells, TR1 cells. And she, she, she was one of the people that really elucid elucidated the one of the first mechanisms or described one of the first mechanisms by which TR1 cells regulate peripheral, uh, peripheral tolerance. In the course of doing this work, she discovered that DC10, which is uh, IL-10 producing dendritic cells, played a major role in inducing these uh, TR1 regulatory T cells. And, and I think it's fair to say that um, her current work, uh, um, a large focus of it is on DC10, elucidating the, the mechanisms by, by which these dendritic cells regulate immune tolerance. And I'm also really happy to, to say that um, um, Sylvia managed to get a really nice EU grant with, with other tolerogenic dendritic cell groups to also to try to improve the tolerogenic function of therapeutic toll disease by uh, by, by improving their L10 producing capacity. And maybe I've said already too much there, Sylvia, but I'm really looking right. very much forward to your talk. So okay. thank you very much, Catherine, for a very nice introduction. I'm so happy to be here and to present our what I've done. So I'm sorry, there is something wrong. Let me see if I can go back there. Okay. Okay, share. Okay, I hope you see my screen. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so uh, as uh, as you may know, today my talk will be focused on the role of ITAM modulated dendritic cells uh, in the modulation and induction of um, tolerance. And as you may know, the um, one of the main uh, uh, mechanisms in in, uh, in healthy condition, we have uh, a balance between the effectors and the uh, regulatory arm of the immune system. We maintain tissue homeostasis and maintain tolerance. Uh, what occur during a T-cell mediated diseases or in general in immune mediated diseases is that there is a breakage of this immune uh, balance and there is an excessing expansion of the inflammatory arm of the immune system despite the uh, strength of the tolerogenic arm of the immune system. And one of the uh, possibility to restore this balance is use regulatory cell-based therapies because the regulatory cell-based therapy can enhance the frequency of regulatory cells and the regulatory uh, T cells and myeloid cells, uh, limited the expansion of the effector cells by either eliminating the cells or um, inducing exhaustion of effector T cells. And how we can do those, see, this kind of activity, we can use adoptive cell therapies with regulatory cells. And we can either think about to use TREGs, in vitro expanded or induced, 
or uh, tolerogenic dendritic cells. So my during my um, studies, I focus my uh, attention on the role of IL-10 in modulating immune responses and inducing tolerance. As you may know, IL-10 is a pleiotropic cytokines that on one hand uh, has been shown to inhibit a number of different uh, cell, immune cell types, uh, T cells, uh, dendritic cells, and mast cells. But on the other cells, IL-10 can also exert a pro- uh, Mm, uh, pro-effector on expanding B regs, induction of uh, expanding and modulated B cells, induction of B regs. And uh, uh, we also demonstrated, and I will show you some data, that uh, by exposure of the monocytes to IL-10, we can induce a subset of dendritic cells characterized by the ability to produce IL-10. And those cells uh, are Pre are uh, uh, effective in, uh, in promoting uh, the induction of uh, type 1 regulatory TR1 cells. And during my talk, I will focus on this axis between the DC10 or IL-10 producing DCs and their ability to promote TR1 cells. So uh, just for, no, for who is not really familiar with the TR1 cells, so TR1 cells are CD4 positive regulatory cells, which are distinct from the FOXP3 T regs. So in, while FOXP3 T regs are um, express FOXP3, express uh, inhibitory molecules, uh, mediate uh, uh, suppression by cell-to-cell -cell content and L2 consumption, in addition to the production of anti-inflammatory cytokine and uh, uh, modulation of the adenosine metabolism, the TR1 share some of the mechanism uh, of suppression uh, that are present in the FOX between, such as the expression of inhibitory molecules, the modulation of the adenosine metabolism, but what is really critical and different compared to the FOXP3 is that the TR1 cells uh, mediate primarily immune suppression by the secretion of IL-10 and TGF-beta. Through the secretion of IL-10, they can modulate T cells, myeloid cells, B cells, and other cell types. TR1 cells can be identify in the peripheral blood or in cell culture by the co-expression of these two biomarkers, LAC3 and CD49B. And this is quite important because uh, uh, later you will see that this marker allowed us to study the TR1. And in contrast to the FOXP3, TR1 also can also specifically kill myeloid cells upon activation via L10 and TCR, they upregulate a bunch of markers and the ability to secrete granzyme B, and this mechanism allow them to kill uh, myeloid cells in, in, in vitro and in vivo. So uh, during the uh, characterization of tier one and uh, focusing on identify mechanism and uh, approaches to generate tier one for cell-based approaches, I end up to the discovery of the DC10. So DC10 are generated from peripheral blood monocytes in the presence of GMCSFNL4 and exogenous IL-10. And those cells are characterized by the expression of a bunch of tolerogenic molecules such as ILT2, T3, T4, and HLAG. They are mature myeloid cells, so they express CD80 and CD86 and HLADR. And uh, uh, they spontaneously produce IL-10 in the absence of IL-12. And once they get activated with LPS or LPS interferon gamma, they maintain the ability to produce IL-10, but they do not upregulate IL-12. Uh, those cells are uh, particularly effective in promoting allospecific TR1 cells. So if you culture DC10 with allogenic CD4 for 10 days, you end up with a population of cells which are contain up to 30% of CD49B LAC3 positive T regs. And I remind you that this, the co-expression of these two markers are um, indicate that those cells are uh, TR1 cells. And importantly, those TR1 cells are able to suppress T cell, um, allogenic T cell responses in vitro. Moreover, we um, investigated uh, um, by transcriptional profiling the uh, molecule that allowed us to study these cells, not only in vitro, but also in vivo. 
And we, end, we uh, discovered that the C10 have a peculiar phenotype since they co-express CD14 and CD16, CD163 and CD141. Using uh, the um, DC10, the uh, group of Maria Grazia Roncarolo scale up the protocol for the degeneration of TR1 using DC10 generated from uh, patients and uh, um, T cells from donor of allogenic uh, bone marrow transplantation. And uh, she, they generated and scale up the production of TR1 that they call TLO10 cells. And as you can see, in the culture generated with the DC10, we have a high frequency of TR1 cells co-expressing CD49B and LAC3. Those cells uh, um, express a peculiar cytokine production profile associated to TR1. Uh, they are allergic upon allospecific uh, stimulation in vitro. They suppress T cell responses because they are uh, allospecific TR1 cells. The, uh, Maria Grazia demonstrated that they have a restricted repertoire and they have a specific molecular signature uh, that is superimposable to the TR1 that can be generated by IL-10 and anti-CD3 and 28. Uh, Maria Grazia used those TISADLO-10 in, in a context of marrow transplantation to prevent graft versus host disease. And uh, uh, she performed a clinical trial and uh, uh, she demonstrated that a year after the infusion of the TLO10, the TLO10 are still present in the circulation of, my, of these uh, uh, men uh, transplanted, and they are uh, con they control the GVHD and the um, in vivo. As I said, we identify biomarker that allowed us uh, the identification of DC10 in the peripheral blood, and we demonstrated that we can fax sorted this DC10 from the peripheral blood of healthy controls. And we demonstrated that those cells are superimposable to the in vitro differentiated disease, DC10, since they promote the differentiation of TR1. And those uh, TR1 cells exert suppressic activity. So in vivo, we have a, a, a fraction of circulating DC10, which are uh, functional, superimposable to the in vitro differentiated DC10. So we have a bunch, a, a, a subset of cells that are characterized by the expression of the CD14. And so these uh, new um, biomarkers allowed us to better study the uh, genetic and epigenetic signature of DC10 and to study the role of DC10 in high time mediated tolerance in vivo. Um, the analysis of the epigenetic signature of DC10 has been published. I just summarized what we uh, discovered. So we perform epigenetic ATASEC analysis and uh, RNA-SEC analysis of in vitro differentiated DC10 compared to immature dendritic cells. We perform um, uh, a rich genetic feature and molecular analysis, the molecular mediators. And we identify that uh, uh, IL-10 during DC10 differentiation induce uh, the um, uh, translocation of EHR into the nucleus and the expression of a set of genes, uh, which we call DC10 core genes, which uh, uh, allow the DC10 to, um, to function as regulatory dendritic cells. The EHR activity, we demonstrated as is critical required for the induction of the tolerogenic activity of the DC10s. Indeed, upon exposure to IL-10 during monocyte-derived dendritic DC10 differentiation, AHR translocate into the nucleus and activate uh, uh, the expression of uh, the DC10 core genes, which render the DC10 tolerogenic and able to generate TR1. If we block this AHR signaling, we completely prevent the induction of DC10 and the cells that are generated are pro-inflammatory dendritic cells which promote activation and proliferation of effector cells. We also demonstrated that this il 10 hr gene signature is active in vivo, in ex vivo isolated DC10 from healthy controls, but is, uh, sorry, but, but is uh, um, defective 
in the C10 isolated from MS patients, indicated that this IL-10HR genomic signature is altered in autoimmune settings such as in multiple sclerosis. As I said, this uh, marker allowed us also to, to study the DC10 and the role of DC10 in vivo in induced intolerance. We previously demonstrated that DC10 are associated with pregnancies because they accumulate in the decidua, in the decidua, human decidua during pregnancy. And uh, we demonstrated that there is a high frequency of DC10 in peripheral blood OEML patient, indicated that uh, a, a potential immune escape mechanism mediated by DC10 in cancer patient. More recently, we investigated the frequency of DC10 in peripheral blood of type 1D patients and first uh, for FDR patient of type 1D patients, antibody negative or antibody positive in comparison to HMATCH LT controls. And as you can see, in uh, patients uh, either type 1D or FDR with the uh, an ongoing autoimmunity, the frequency of DC10 is reduced compared to that we, that we have in healthy controls. This reduced frequency is associated with an increased frequency of effector and inflammatory dendritic cells, which are the DC2 that, that are characterized by the CD11C and CD1C expression. And when we analyze and we um, measure the uh, ratio between the tolerogenic and inflammatory dendritic cells, you can see that there is an imbalance in the, um, this ratio in patients with autoimmunity in uh, type 1D patient or FDR antibody positive uh, subjects. This uh, feature has also been uh, shown in MS patients. So also in MS patients, we have reduced frequency of peripheral blood DC10. And, uh, but as I already told you, the reduced frequency of DC10 that we see in MS patient might be related to the altered IL-10HR pathway that is required for their induction uh, in, in vitro and possibly in vivo. More recently, we, uh, um, so far I show you that DC10 are in the peripheral blood, but then we ask whether DC10 are also, in, are also present in tissues. And we have the opportunity to study the presence of DC10 in tissues, taking the advantage of uh, a study performed in celiac disease patient with different grade of the disease. So celiac disease patient, uh, celiac disease is a gluten sensitive enteropathy, which is T cell mediated. And uh, we can stratify the patients which are um, HLA uh, restricted and they, can, they have the autoantibodies, but we can stratify the patient in patient with atrophic disease. So there is an active damage of the mucosa to uh, patients which have all the, uh, the HLA restricted and the serology of the disease, but they are, do not have still the disease. So they, we call them potential CD patient because the uh, gut mucosa is intact. And moreover, we have the possibility to study the gut mucosa and the peripheral blood of patients who underwent gluten-free diet uh, therapy. From these patients, we collected peripheral blood and gut biopsies, and we investigated the immunophenotype and the characterized the T cell response. Today, I will focus on the uh, frequency of DC10 and TR1 cells in those patients and subjects. So, as you can see, and surprisingly to us, what we found is that independently from the inflamm inflammation in the gut, Either the acute CD patient or the potential CDs, I remind you, potential CD do, are not uh, celiac patients yet. We have a, an increased frequency of inflammatory dendritic cells and no major differences in the frequency of circulating DC10. And this is associated with the increased uh, uh, inflammatory signature in the peripheral blood uh, depicted by increased levels of IL-12 and interferon gamma in the peripheral blood of those patients, indicating that the exposure to gluten increase and induce an inflammatory signature in celiac disease patients independently from the uh, disruption of the gut and the mucosa. But what, when we analyze the gut mucosa, 
Interestingly, we found that in those patients in which we have the control of the tissue damage, we have a significantly increase in the proportion of DC10 compared to patients with active uh, disease and inflammatory mucosa, and no differences in the frequency of the inflammatory dendritic cell. Despite the high frequency of DC10, we don't see induction or increased frequency of TR1 cells in the gut mucosa of the potential CD patients. However, we found expansion of FOXP3 in acute CD patient. And we explain this because these FOXP3 cells try to cope with inflammatory in the gut of these patients. But once we put the, we analyze the, the gut mucosa of patient under gluten-free diet, we haven't seen much differences compared to the acute CD patient in the frequency of DC10, but we see a, a, an expansion of TR1, which are the cells that are, we demonstrated in the past that this is our antigen specific, so gliadin specific TR1, which restore tolerance into the gut. So according to the analysis that we sh I show you, what we can say is that in the periphery, we have a, a steady state condition, a balance between TR1 and DC10 and the effector, uh, inflammatory CD2 and effector cells. When we have lack of tolerance, we have uh, an increased frequency of the inflammatory harm of the immune system, despite the limit, uh, limiting in the DC10 and TR1. When we look at the, in the target organ, in, during inflammation, we have indeed higher frequency of inflammatory cells and lower frequency of regulatory cells. And when we establish tolerance, such as in gluten-free diet patients, we restore the balance and we increase the frequency of DC10 and, uh, and TR1 in gluten-free diet and in uh, potential CD, the frequency of DC10. So, so far I show you that uh, in different type of uh, uh, immune mediated diseases, such as multiple sclerosis, type 1D or celiac disease, we have reduction in the frequency of DC10, which is associated with the reduction in, in TR, antigen-specific TR1s and IL-10. Whereas in celiac disease patient, I show you that as soon as we reestablish tolerance, we have expansion of antigen-specific TR1 and, uh, and IL-10 production. This means that if we want to restore tolerance in this setting, we may think about to perform TR1 cell-based therapy in order to restore the frequency of TR1 and antigen-specific TR1, or alternatively, we can use tolerogenic cell, DC cell therapy in order to reestablish tolerance. And as you can imagine, we are focusing on the use of TOL-DC-based cell therapy. Why? Because TOL-DC can uh, mediate multiple mechanisms of action. We know that they... Uh, modulate effector T-cell responses by promoting T-cell inhibition and T-cell energy. They um, study in vitro demonstrated that tall disease can either expand Tregs of in, uh, and TR1 cells or can induce the induction of either TR1 and Fo or FOXP3 dependent on the, on the cytokine and the expression of molecules of the tall disease. And importantly, once we inject them in vivo, by the production of inhibitory molecules such as IL-10 or TGF-beta, they may um, modify the resident APC, induces them towards a tolerogenic phenotype. And then in this way, we can restore a self-sustained and physiological process of tolerance. And this in, um, in vivo resident APC then can uh, expand the tolerogenic activity of, uh, uh, of the disease, so restoring the physiological processes. As you can imagine, we thought to use DC10 as a cell therapy, but unfortunately, one, 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 when we try to generate DC10 from MS patients, we see that the DC10 that can generate it from monocytes of MS patient are defective compared to the DC10 uh, generated from healthy controls. So they're less heavy, uh, potent in modulating proliferation, activation, and induction of TR1 cells. So we thought that we need to identify um, alternative 
mechanism and model to generate altem producing cells in this setting. And we end up to uh, start, establish an, uh, a protocol to engineer monocytes with a vector encoding with L10 during DC differentiation. And we generate a population of cells that we call DC L10 because they are uh, so uh, they produce a supraphysiological level of L10 at steady state and upon activation. And those cells similar to the DC10, once they get activated, they do not produce L12. They promote uh, TR1 similar to the DC10 at high ratio, and this TR1 can suppress allo T cell responses. And uh, uh, moreover, those cells are stable in phenotype and function, and we demonstrated that those cells modulate allogenic uh, T cell responses in vivo. But if you want to use those cells in an autoimmune setting, we need to generate antigen-specific L10 engineer cells. And to do so, what we did, we modified our vector and we substituted the NG, uh, Delta NGFR, which was for us the marker vector, with a construct encoding for the clip in which we put an antigen peptide. So we have an invariant change in which we embedded a, a immunodominant peptide. This construct allows on one end to uh, allow the dendritic cells to present the encoded antigen in class one. And this is the classical pathway of antigen uh, encoded by lentiviral vectors. So they are um, processed through the protosome and then uh, the MHC class one molecules can present the antigen, the encoded antigen. But thanks to the invariant chain, we drive the trafficking of the vector into the endosome. And so the encoded peptide can be um, um, put in the binding groove of the novo generated class two molecules. And so the transduced cells can present the encoded antigen also to CD4 cells. So what we did, we generated two types of dendritic cells, one that we call DC IL-10 antigen, which are cells that produce IL-10 and present the antigen, which are encoded by the lentiviral vector. And we hypothesized that these cells uh, can promote uh, antigen, energy, T cell energy, and antigen specific TR1 cells. And as control, we generated DC antigen cells in which we use the same uh, construct encoding with the antigen in the absence of L10. And this uh, DC, as we suppose that they present the antigen to autoreactive CD4, leading to their proliferation. So to do this construct, we need to use immunodominant peptide and we, we need to know the HLA class two restriction, of course. And uh, we validated the approach using as a model antigen, the insulin immunodominant peptide 923, which is restricted to uh, HLA-DQ8. So to validate the approach, we sel uh, selected the DQ8 uh, healthy subjects, we isolated the monocytes, and we transduced the monocyte with the different vectors. In the, we use the vectors encoded with L10 and insulin, vector encoded with delta and GFR and insulin, and as control, we also generate a vector in which we have only CLIP and delta and GFR. So uh, this is our disease, control disease for the antigen specificity. We can engineer the monocytes from uh, healthy controls with our vectors. Uh, uh, the L10 transduced cells produce high levels of L10 and they acquire the DC phenotype in terms of DC sign, HLADR, and ATC, a, an expression of CD80. Moreover, they upregulate molecules uh, and marker associated to DC10. And in addition to L10, once uh, they do not produce L12 and TNF either open activation. Then we use those cells and we compare the IL-10 insulin transduced with the insulin transduced cells and we activate the autologous CD4. And uh, after six days, you can see that if we reactivated autologous CD4 
with uh, this is encoding with L10 and insulin, we limit the activation and the, pro the proliferation of uh, insulin-specific T cells compared to the to uh, cells that has been exported to the control DCA insulin. And if we culture cells for 10 days and we analyze in the proliferative uh, subset, uh, the proliferative uh, part of the cells, so the antigen-specific cells, the frequency of TR1, we found that the DCL10 insulin promotes the expansion or induction of antigen specific uh, TR1 cells according to the co expression of CD49B and LAC3. We validate that those cells are really bona fide TR1 because we sorted those cells. We perform RNA seq analysis, and you can see that the cells induced by DCL10 are. I have a transcriptional profile completely different to the cells generated by controlled DC insulin. And when we compare the signature to the signature identified in TR10 and in TR1 cells, we found that indeed the, the, the TR1 induced by DC10 insulin uh, disease are, um, share the molecular signature of the TR1. So we can induce bona fide TR1 with our cells. As I said, the, this uh, construct allowed us to change the antigens and so to generate different uh, dendritic cells for, uh, with different antigen specificity. And we had to do so to uh, validate the pot potential of use these cells as cell therapy in autoimmune diseases. And uh, we tested the ability of this DC antigen IL-10 in a model of type 1D in vivo, and to do so, we need to generate DC IL-10 expressing IP 2.5 or the insulin mimitop. These are the two immunodominant peptides in type 1D models. So using the IP DC, we inject them into the model of transfer model in which we um, we transfer CD4, diabetogenic CD4 T cells in NOD mice. And as you can see, transfer of those cells uh, promote uh, diabetes very fast in two weeks. If we inject mice with the control DC IP, we have an acceleration of the disease because we prime the effector cells uh, in vivo. Whereas in 50% of the mice uh, treated with DC IL-10 IP, we have complete prevention of the di diabetes. We analyze in the, in the spleen of these either control mice or uh, induced mice with the DC IL-10 and the, and the controls. We found that in those mice that receive the DC IL-10, we have an expansion of BDC 2.5 specific T cells co-expressing LAC3 and 45B, indicating that we have, uh, by using our approach, the induction of antigen specific DR1 cells in vivo. We use, uh, we use also the transfer model of uh, splenocyte into um, NSG mice. In this case, in addition to using the insulin DC as control, we also introduce DCs which express IL-10 and an irrelevant antigen. In this case, diab uh, diabetes occur in, in 30 days. If you inject the um, insulin, uh, con DC insulin control cells, we don't see any differences compared to the control. The same is true if mice receive IL-10 and OVA, indicated that uh, um, is not IL-10 that drive, drive the induction of tolerance. While when we treat the mice with the IL-10 insulin, we have also in this case 50% of protection. And when we isolate the spleni, splenocyte from these mice in comparison to a splenocyte of mice that uh, develop diabetes in newly uh, recipient mice, cells that comes from these tolerant mice do not transfer diabetes, indicated that we have an induction of active mechanism of tolerance in this setting. Then we validated the approach in the context of uh, autoimmune diseases, and we took the advantage of uh, having access to the celiac disease patient. In this case, uh, we need to use gliadin as immunodominant peptide, and uh, we generated our transduced cells from monocyte from, gliad from uh, uh, celiac disease patients. 
And we demonstrated that also in this case, if we reactivate the autologous CD4 with the DC insulin gliadin, we prevent the proliferation and interferon gamma production by insulin, uh, by gliadin specific CD4 cells. And uh, if we analyze at 10 days in the proliferation, so in the antigen specific subset of cells, we have the uh, induction of uh, uh, antigen specific TR1 cells also in celiac disease patients, so in, uh, in, um, in, uh, in a disease setting. So, so far I show you that our cells, the C alten antigen, can modulate antigen specific cells by inducing antigens, inhibiting cell responses, and promoting antigen specific TR1. Then we ask whether these cells can also modulate antigen specific T cell responses. And we did uh, this in allo setting. If we do a primary MLR using CD8 as a, as a responder, the DCL10 prevent uh, the, uh, the activation and the proliferation of the CD8. The cells that has been primed with the DCL10 re-stimulated with the same allo antigen show inhibitor reactivity and inhibitor cytotoxicity compared to cells that has been generated with the full uh, mature uh, dendritic cells, controlled dendritic cells. And like uh, what we, we see in the CD4, in a secondary MLR, the T cell that has been prime with the, the DC10 are proliferated less. And this uh, inhibition and this energy, this is energy because when we put alten in culture, we completely revert their proliferative capacity. Then we ask what happens if you do the cell therapy in vivo, we use ov ovalbumin as a model antigen. In vitro, we generated DC10, uh, uh, IL10 OVA, uh, specific for the uh, sick fecal antigen. And in vitro, we inhibit uh, the proliferation of OT1 cells. And when we inject mice uh, with uh, multiple uh, injection of our cells, you can see that the DC IL10 OVA induce uh, uh, priming of the OT1 cells, but uh, specifically, it, uh, the, the uh, infusion of the CL10 OVA promote the induction of exhausting CD8 T cells in vivo. So CD8, IL10 antigen can modulate not only CD4, but also CD8 T cell responses. And finally, we ask what happens if we modulate, do the cells modulate B cell responses because in autoimmune setting, B cells also play a role. And to do so, and this is because it's known that IL-10 can modulate B cell responses, promote isotype switching, and also inducing B regs. However, it is also known, sorry, that the, the dendritic cell can also modulate the B cell directly or indirectly, and can also um, license the B cells uh, to become B regs but little is known on the role of tolerogenic cells. And so we ask whether the Alten transduce can modulate B cell responses. To do so, we uh, uh, sorted the naive and memory B cells and we selected the best stimuli to test our DCL10 cells. And uh, um, we use different stimuli and we selected for the naive B cell, the CPGL2, and for the memory R480, because the goal was to, to use a suboptimal activation of B cells in order to see the modulation of uh, mediated by the DCL10. We demonstrated that once we stimulated the naive B cells with CPGL2 and memory cells with R480 and L2, cells can respond to IL10 because they express IL10 receptor. And this is because I remind you, our DCL10 do produce a huge amount of IL10. So we need to be sure that the, the IL10, the B cells can respond to IL10. And then we uh, set up a, a, a protocol in which we activate a naive memory B cell with the selected stimuli in the presence of IL10 transduce or an S control GFP. And moreover, S control, we use exogenous IL10. In terms of proliferation, uh, the the CL10 or GFP promote naive B cell proliferation, uh, both in the naive and in the memory. In the naive, IL10 does not promote prolif while uh, promote the prolif of the memory B cells. 
and the, the CL10 in the memory uh, promote significantly high frequency uh, proliferation, which is associated to the induction of antigens, uh, antibody producing cells, uh, which co express CD39 and 27. We analyzed the phenotype of these uh, expanded uh, T, uh, B cells in the memory compartment, and we saw that the IL-10 disease reduced the frequency of EGG positive cells. So they induce antibody secreting cells, but they reduce expression of G, H, uh, IgG on the cell surface. And this is, is associated with the production of uh, IgG and specifically production of gamma, uh, gamma 4, which is an inhibitory isotype, um, IgG isotype known to be play a role in tolerance induction. So uh, to, to conclude the, what we know so far for the IL-10 antigen, IL-10 antigen can modulate CD4 and CD8 T cell responses and can also modulate directly and indirectly memory B cell responses. So in conclusion, we, we have uh, a cell type which is able to uh, modulate specifically antigen-specific responses, induce TR1, antigen-specific TR1s, and modulate antigen-specific B cell responses. So we believe that this platform, which allowed us to change the antigen according to the disease, is a promising tool to engineer cells to generate a, a, an effective uh, uh, antigen based cell, uh, DC antigen uh, specific cell based approaches. And uh, the advantages of the platform is that the platform allows stable and uh, expression and presentation of the coded antigen. Uh, the conversion or induction is not clear so far of uh, uh, CD4 cell, pathogenic CD4 into TR1 cells and uh, pathogenic CD8 into exhausted cells. It does not interfere with the protective uh, against uh, pathogens. I don't have to, to time to show you, but uh, we show that if you re reactivate uh, mice uh, injected with the CL10 with pathogens, mice re can respond to the pathogens. And so uh, we are currently try to translate this approach in clinical setting in type 1D, as you can imagine, as, as already anticipated by Catherine, we, have, uh, we are working in Horizon Europe uh, grant in which we are trying to um, improve the tolerogenic activity of the vitamin D3 cells by transducing the vitamin D3 with L10 and uh, um, in order to um, allow the vitamin D3 cells to promote uh, uh, tr one antigen-specific TR1 cells in order to improve uh, potentially their tolerogenic activity in, in, uh, in, um, in clinical setting. And we are doing these kind of activities in MS patients because, as you may know, vitamin D3 cells has been already tested in, in clinical trial in MS patients, saying that the, the, the Vitamin D3 are well tolerated and self, but it's not really clear whether this uh, therapy induced Tregs. So the idea is to, in addition to, um, to combine the immunoregulatory activity of the vitamin D3 with the immunoregulatory activity of L10 and, uh, by engineering those cells. And with that, I hope I'm in time. So I have to thank all the members of the LAM member and the, all the collaborators uh, that allows all these uh, uh, activities and, uh, and these uh, results and hope uh, in the next future to have data regarding the cell-based approaches and uh, the activity of those cells in a clinical setting as a in, in a clinical trial. Thank you. Thanks, Sylvia. Wonderful talk. Um, um, is, does anyone have any questions? that they can either put in the chat or um, just, um, you know, switch on your video and ask the question. Yes, Kat. I've, well, I've, I've, I've got a few questions, but I just ask one and then see how we get on. I mean, thank you so much for a wonderful talk, Sylvia. That's thank you. really, really impressive. So I have a question about the relative importance of interleukin-10 production by your DC-10. 
Because if you look at the phenotype of your DC-10, there's other regulatory markers that they express, like ALT4, for instance, and there's probably a bunch other of other markers. So do you know whether, whether the secretion of AL10 and their effects on T cells, is, is that something that plays a really big role? Uh, so is, is that the important part of DC-10 or is the AL10 also responsible for feeding back on the dendritic cells and help to establish this regulatory phenotype? And in fact, the, the whole combined picture of regulatory molecules by DC-10 is involved in the induction of TR1 cells. It's it's not only an L10 story. That's my yeah. that's my question. Yeah, indeed, indeed. I mean, in the when we characterize DC10, we uh, we saw we we demonstrated that the L10 production um, license also by the genes in the epigenetic analysis. So the um, L10 induce uh, the expression of different molecules, the, including IL-10 itself. And uh, we demonstrated that the HLAG and ILT4, which are induced by IL-10, are critical for the TR1. So you have IL-10, but also other molecules that in contact to T cells drive the TR1 induction. And what we demonstrated that, uh, because during the TR1 induction, you have two steps. First of all, you need to induce energy. So you need to activate the cells towards the antigen, but the cells uh, get activated, but they do not expand. So you need to induce energy. Once you induce energy, in the presence of high level of IL-10, the cells become TR1. Okay. So we have these two steps. The first steps for the induction of energy, we demonstrated that HLAG plays a key role because HLAG induces energy. Once the energy is induced, then IL-10 takes over and promote the, the, the real differentiation of TR1 because IL-10 is known to be a key molecule for the TR1 induction. Okay. But you need so, to pass through the energy. So now, now you're going to combine the IL-10 with vitamin D3. So do you already know if the vitamin D3 could perhaps negatively impact HLAG and IL-T4, which seems to be really important for your cells? Actually, we are we are doing an experiment, and uh, so far, IL-10 win. So basically, as soon as you have IL-10, HLAG and okay. IL-T4 get, get, get expressed. So this uh, is, um, since the, the, the IL-10 transduce cells, they produce so high levels of IL-10, IL-10 induce HLAG and IL-T4, so you induce the, the expression. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Um, can I ask a question, if that's okay? Sure. Um, would you, so I had two questions, actually. The first thing is, um, the celiac, the gluten-free diet in, uh, expanded your DC-10s. Uh, no, my opinion, what, the, according to the data that we collected, I was really surprised mm -hmm. because in my mind, uh, there was always this, I mean, since in vitro we have DC-10 tier one, I thought if I have tier one, I need to have tier, uh, sorry, if I have increased frequency of DC-10, I do have tier one. Mm -hmm. But in the case, we have two different pictures because in the case of the potential CD patients, we see DC-10, so, but we don't have the expansion of tier one because in my opinion, in, to get tier one, you need the antigen triggering, which okay. in, a, in a healthy mucosa is not there because you don't have damage of the mucosa. The gluten is not uptaken by disease and cannot prime T cells to become tier one because we know, we know that for tier one, you need the antigen triggering, which is a little bit different from the FOX. Mm. In the gluten-free diet, as soon as you eliminate the gluten, so you, you eliminate the uh, antigen, but you have, so the DC have, have already done the job. So they are in, they have already induced antigen, spe gluten specific CD4. You eliminate the antigen, although you don't have differences in the frequency of DC10, DC10 are there and they can re-stimulate the, the antigen specific 
cells to become tier one. That's yeah. why we don't have these differences. This yeah, no, is my true. interpretation. I don't have real proof, but this is, is the interpretation. No, that, yeah, I can, yeah. I think that that's a very cool system because if that's the case, then you can modulate it for MS as well. Like most most uh, autoimmune diseases, you've got your DCs, which are priming the CD4. You remove the antigen, then they become TR1s and calm it down. It's, it's a very You need cool. to remove the, I mean, either remove the antigen or present the antigen in a tolerogenic manner. Yeah. Because uh, as I said, I'm not, I do not know whether in in the, when I use the uh, um, CD4 from celiac patients, in which I know that I have gliadin specific CD4, when I see TR1 induction, I don't know whether I convert the antigen specific effector into TR1 or since I use total CD4 yeah. because I cannot no uh, for a number game I cannot use memory versus naive but I have naive there so it could be that you can either induce the TR1 from naive or com and or convert the effect of T cells into TR1 we have this double effect mm -hmm. but I cannot rule it out with patients because of number games because yeah. no uh, absolutely you, you cannot like you know so I mean you won't get any cells if you start yeah start. very very few cells yeah <laughs> yeah May I ask one more question and then um, we'll see if, if no one else. So the AHR, so um, the AHR IL-10 axis is quite interesting. And uh, you mentioned blocking AHR. And yeah. I wondered if you could expand on um, AHR reagents and what are the, what are good blocking reagents? Because, you know, it's a complete, AHR is quite complicated. Yeah. It's very complicated. Actually, we use a specific inhibitors Mm -hmm. And uh, we were lucky enough to 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 pick up the best uh, inhibitor that completely revert the activity of AHR in in our cells. It is a CH thirteen something else that yeah. is specifically revert. But as you say, uh, the AHR ligands have different effects. So the the what we think is that the IL ten do modulate uh, the transcription alpha file and transcription factors that allow the modification of the chromatin. And then once the chromatin is uh, open up, the uh, and allow the trans because the DL10 does not induce AHR. Right? AHR is there. Just allow the translocation into the nucleus. So allows the functionality of the HR. Okay. But to do so, you need to open up the, the chromatin in order to to allow the HR to work. And this is, is a mechanism completely opposite of what has been described in tier one cells, because in tier one cells, HR comes first and I'll thank later. In DC is opposite. And we are trying to figure out which are the factors that license the chromatin to be binded by the HR. Okay, so what opens the chromatin up? Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Wow, that's that's been really insightful for us because you know uh, we we look at IL ten and you know in T regs they T regs some make IL ten, but it's good to have like a comprehensive story on IL ten. Um, if anyone else has any questions, if not, I can um bring the session to a close. May I have a final question? Yes, yes. <laughs> Sophia, can you comment on the migratory capacity of DC10? So the in vivo DC10 seem to migrate because you you, you find them in, in different tissues, but the, the monocyte derived cultured ones have they migrated? Well, they do. I mean, I did uh, um I cannot say the uh human DC10 because uh, uh I did the uh, we are doing the the biodistribution of human DC in in, in humans in uh, immurin they migrate into the secondary lymph node organs such as the spleen or lymph nodes they they can migrate which is key because otherwise they cannot modulate uh, uh, T cell response either T cells or B cell responses basically. And the ones you're going to make with the vitamin D3 and the tron uh, transduced Al10, uh, are you going? You're going to check for migratory ability of those cells as well. Yeah, we are. We are. I mean, uh, Eva will check uh, yeah. the um, the murine in a murine system. Okay. Where they go. 
uh, in the EAE model, she yeah. will compare the vitamin D3 with delta and transduce in order to see whether they either do the same the job, whether they can control the disease, and, and also importantly, where they go. Yeah. That's uh, is critical. Yeah. But all, you could always just in, introduce CCR7 into your construct. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's a possibility. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a future possibility, which might future be future possibility. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank okay, you. Right. Although it might be difficult to put it in the vector, so we need to design a yeah. good vector because bigger is the vector, less is the infectivities. But yeah, we can work on it. Yeah. yeah. Um. Do you can you do like deteriorated, um, clinical trials? The you know the the heavy water clinical trials with the DCs or. That's quite quite not possible to 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 see this the the the, the, yeah, the persistence, yeah. the persistence. Yeah. so what we know uh, at least in the animal models uh, is that they see persist in vivo two to three weeks uh, not more than that so then they disappear which from the safe point of view it's fine because they are transduced with a vector so they are not really persistent cells uh, I don't know, of course, in in, uh, in humans what happened, but um, we will see if right. we go there. Actually, I'm not <laughs> sure whether we will get there, but uh, yeah, yeah. But that's really exciting, really exciting stuff. We look forward to more um, more talks from you. Actually, in the future, very helpful to us. Thank you. Thank um, you very much. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Kat, shall I close the session? If we had, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Sylvia. Thanks, Kat. Thank you very much. Thanks, bye. Everyone. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Sylvia. Ciao. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Ciao. <laughs>